Hello everybody, my name is Iman at SID. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about alkylation. The focus of this discussion about alkylation is exploring how we can add R groups or alkyl groups to the alpha carbons of carbonyl compounds. This is, synthetically speaking, extremely important. And what we notice from this page is that regardless of whether you are starting with an enolate, an enamine, or an acetoacetic ester, there are reagents that you can treat each one of these groups with to accomplish to accomplish alkylation, adding an alkyl group to them, or even, as you notice, insulation, although we will not be focusing on that in this session. What we are going to explore is this in detail and how it plays out with various problems. And our, st our starting place will be with alkylation of the alpha position of a ketone or aldehyde. Now, you can treat a ketone to have it form an enolate, and then you can treat the enolate with an alkyl halide to ultimately accomplish this alkylation of the alpha position. So if your goal is to add an R group to the alpha position of a ketone, you can do this by taking the ketone for having it form an enolate followed by treating of an alkyl halide. How would you do this? Well, you can treat your ketone with LDAA to form an enolate and then treat it further followed by uh, your alkyl halide to attach whatever R group, whatever alkyl group you want to the alpha position. Now, with symmetrical ketones, this is easy. All right, you have two alpha positions that are equivalent. So it doesn't matter which one you want to add, which one that the R group gets added to. They're equivalent. But with an unsymmetrical, with an unsymmetrical ketone, two possible en enolates are possible as you observe here. The question we want to answer now is, well, which condition prefers which and which which one is going to give us what kind of product? Well, whenever you start with an unsymmetrical ketone like this, the more substituted enolate is called the thermodynamic enolate. The least substituted enolate, which is less stable but is formed more rapidly, is called your kinetic enolate. In general, it is possible to choose which conditions will favor formation of either enolate. All right, it's possible to choose conditions that will favor formation of either enolate. When the kinetic enolate is desired, what you want to do is you want to treat your unsymmetrical ketone with LDA at low temperatures, like, say, negative 80 degrees Celsius. All right, LDA is a sterically hindered base and can more readily deprotonate the less hindered alpha position, and therefore you form your kinetic enolate. And then as a consequence, the product you form, all right, the product you form is you have added an R group to the least sterically hindered position. So if you're treating this with, for example, a an ethyl bromide, for example, all right, you're treating this unsymmetrical ketone with a ethyl bromide and you're treating it with LDA at low temperatures, you're going to add that ethyl group to the least substituted alpha position, and you're going to get a product like this. Now, what if you want to add the ethyl to the more substituted alpha position? Well, then you want to form your thermodynamic enolate, and to do that, you want to use a non-sterically hindered base like sodium hydride at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, and what you get as a product is something that looks like this with your ethyl being added here. And let's let's do this. With, let's observe this with even more practice problems. Let's do A here. Here's our ketone. We're treating it with LDA at low temperatures. All right, and we're trying to add a methyl group, as you see here. Now, since we're doing LDA at low temperatures, we're going to be adding the methyl to the least substituted alpha position, which is going to be that. And it's going to give us a product that looks like this. All right, let's do B now. All right, we're using a non-sterically hindered base and we want to add this whole uh, alkyl group right here. We're going to add it to the more substituted alpha position because we're using a non-sterically hindered base. I know there's no temperature here, but usually when there isn't, it refers to room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. And so we get to add our substituent right here at the more substituted alpha position. I'll let you do C and let me know what you get. 
Now, moving away from all that, let's discuss melonic ester synthesis. The melonic ester synthesis is a technique that enables the transformation of a halide into a carboxylic acid with the introduction of two no, new carbon atoms. And the key reagent used to achieve this is diethylmalonate, which you see here. The first step of the malonic ester synthesis is to deprotonate the diethylmalonate, forming a doubly stabilized enolate right here. Now, this enolate, this nucleophilic region right here, is going to attack your alkyl halide you're going to add the r group you're going to the halogen's going to leave all right and what's going to happen is this alkylation you're going to add an r group right here between the two carbonyl groups now treatment with an aqueous acid after that is going to result in the hydrolysis of both ester groups these ethoxide groups are going to become alcohol groups all right now if you treat it with heat What's going to happen is this go is going to break, and what you get is this ketone with the addition of whatever R group you've added, plus carbon dioxide as a byproduct. Now, of course, before you even treat it with acid and heat it up to 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 only to break it up and get this as a product, you can always treat it with more than one set of alkyl halides and add R group more than one R group here. Now, the next thing we want to cover is very similar to this, and it's called the acetoacetic ester synthesis. And here, it's going to convert an alkyl halide into a methyl ketone with the introduction of three new carbon atoms. It's very similar to what we just did, except that the reagent we start off with is, um, <clears throat> is, eth is, is uh, ethyl acetoacetate. All right, first step is very similar. You're going to deprotonate. All right, to form this doubly stabilized enolate, and then it's going to attack your alkyl halide. You're going to add an R group there, like so. All right, then you can treat it with acid and heat. And what happens? What happens is you're going to break this in half to get the ketone aspect of this with the addition of your new R group. And again, you can also treat this several times to add more than one R group before heating up, heating it up and treating it with acid and breaking it apart to get the half of this molecule that does not include the ethoxide. All right, not to not include this ester portion. Whereas in your melonic ester synthesis, you're breaking it up to include both R groups here. All right. Now let's just do an example for both of these, uh, both of these synthesis processes. Starting off with a melonic ester synthesis. So here we're going to look at this molecule, and and this problem is is asking us: Can you propose an efficient synthesis to form this compound? using the malonic ester synthesis all right what that means for us is that we're going to start off with the starting material of a malonic ester synthesis which is our di which is our um i'm sorry our diethyl malonate all right and this is going to look like this all right this is what we start off with our malonic acid what we're going to do is we're going to deprotonate it to get the enolate this enolate is going to attack some alkyl halide what is that alkyl halide well we're going to look at what we're trying to end up with all right everything here past the alpha position this whole group right here is what's going to be attached to our diethyl malonate so that means our r group is going to look like and attached to some um, a halide to some halogen, right? Because we're trying to treat this with an alkyl halide. This nucleophile is going to come attack here, all right? And then our, I, our halogen will leave. What we get now as a consequence is something that looks like this. We have added our alkyl group here. Now what we get to get our final product is treat with acid. This acid is going to convert these ethoxide groups to alcohol groups and then we want to treat with heat because heat will break this up right here between the alpha and beta position and we get the final product that we want 
All right. Now let's do a, a, a synthesis problem where we're uh, trying to get this product using the acetoacetic ester synthesis. All right. Now with this uh, problem, what we're actually starting off with is not our diethyl malinate. Actually, what we're starting off with is our starting material for acetoacetic uh, ester synthesis, and that's going to be ethyl acetoacetate. All right, we're going to go ahead and draw that. All right, this is our starting material for our acetoacetic ester problems. Okay, we're going to deprotonate this. All right, by the way, when we deprotonate this, we're just using a base like sodium ethoxide because that's the group we have here. That's going to deprotonate it. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to use sodium ethoxide to deprotonate it and get our enolate. Now, our enolate is going to react with an alkyl halide. What kind of alkyl halide? Well, we're going to look at this molecule. Here's our alpha position. Everything after the alpha position is the R group we want to add to our ethyl acetoacetate. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to draw that. All right. We're going to add some halogen to this, right? Because it's um, an alkyl halide that we're going to attack. We're going to attack. The halogen will leave. And what we get now is we've added our R group. Fantastic. All right. We've added our R group. All right. Now what we can do is we can treat with acid and heat. And what happens is this is our alpha position. This is our, there we go. We're going to be breaking this off right here after our alpha position, which is right here. Okay. And that results in a product that looks like what we want to get. All right. And so that's how you want to work these synthesis problems when you are starting either with the starting reagent for a malonic ester synthesis, which is our diethylmalonate, or with our acetoacetic ester synthesis, where you're starting off with ethyl acetoacetate. I want you to give these, these other synthesis problems, B, C, and D, for these two uh, types of synthesis problems and let me know what you get if you have questions or if you want me to work them out in a problem set I am more than happy to do that Let me know now next video will be about conjugate addition reactions. So stay tuned for that Besides that good luck happy studying and have a fantastic day